Hi guys, fall is right around the corner. It's after Labor Day and so I am going to make a fall inspired cup. And I'm using one of these 12 ounce um, coffee mugs from Pressing Images and um, this one was just the stainless. So you can get these in sublimation mugs as well, which are awesome um, if you do sublimation, I hear. But I don't do that, and it takes forever to get the coating off of those to sand them. So this one's just stainless. And so I've sanded this down with my mouse sander and 80 grit sandpaper. And I've spray painted it. I spray painted it heritage white um, instead of stark white because, you know, you don't wear white after Labor Day. That's actually not why. It's just because I didn't want it to be quite so bright. So I'm going to use epoxy method to apply glitter to this. So I'm going to do my, my normal um, my normal method for doing this. Uh, I find epoxy method works the best. It has really long dry time and uh, gives you time to work with it. And so I, and you need so little, like I just literally this little bit of s smushed on from my gloves and I'm going to pull it all over the cup. This part should not be easy. If you're getting it on without having to work, you're using too much. If you um, apply enough that you actually have to put it on the spinner to dry, you're using too much. If your glitter looks wet after you apply it, you're using too much epoxy. You, like, you just need literally next to nothing. You need enough to make your whole cup look wet. I don't know where these random bits of glitter are coming from, but... And when you do this, do if you want... If you don't want your handle to be glittered, you can certainly just paint it and not do the handle for this part. Um, I want for me for it to be all 100% glitter here. So I'm just going to drag it. I'm going to make sure it is as smooth as possible and it is in all of the nooks and crannies. And fully smooth. So now I have about a half an hour after making my epoxy before I have to start worrying about it. So you don't have that kind of um, leeway on your time. I'm making, just making sure I have the edges of my handle here done. Um, you don't have that kind of leeway in time with other adhesion methods. So when you're spray painting these cups, <laughs> it's taken me a lot of effort to, or a lot of these, to um, remember that when I go to spray paint, I can't, because I usually just put it on a red Solo cup um, to spray paint to keep the paint out of the insides. Um, and then I happily spray paint, and then I go to, to do it, and um, the tops of my handles are still silver. So... Um, when you go to spray paint cups with handles, start them pointing upward so that you get and, and spray all in the, in the handle and then attach it to your um, whatever it is that you're going to attach it to to spray paint and spray paint the rest of it. So um, it, it's taken me a few stumbles to get that. So I'm going to set that aside for a minute and get rid of my dirty glove because I don't need that for this part. Um, this is one of Robin's brand new fall glitters. She hasn't even named it yet. I've put in a suggestion so by the time I finish this video I'm hoping it has a name but it's a chunky mix and it shifts beautifully from golds to reds to greens to yellows and it it's 
it's stunning. I, I want to call it Autumn Joy. I don't, I've suggested it. I don't know if that's what's going to happen with it or not. But anyway, that's um, the glitter I'm using. And it, it's, it's just gorgeous. So I have down a piece of parchment paper. And I don't have my parchment paper. I have just regular craft paper under me when I'm putting the epoxy on. Just in case I drip. Because I don't want to get epoxy on this. Um, so my glitter sticks to it. And I'm just going to start sprinkling my glitter on. Oh, this is just gorgeous. And make sure you get, if you're doing the handles, get all the way inside all of the layers and angles of the handle. Now this one's gonna be a little harder to do, I just, just realizing, a little harder to do my um, chunky glitter lay down flat trick with the handle part, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. I love this glitter. It looks like I'm using the whole bag. I am not. I have a whole lot of it on my on my bench here. And I'm going to need to do some filling here. Hoping that by using the antique or the heritage white, it wouldn't show through quite as much. But I'm going to need to throw an extra fine in here to um, get that to cover fully. knock off whatever excess I have going on. Isn't that a pretty glitter? So, so pretty. So now I just need to figure out what I'm going to infill with. And I'm, I'm just running my finger along my edge so that I don't have any splakes of glitter sticking up. So, Set this aside for a second and gather up this glitter and put it back in the bag. would work for that. Just to, or maybe. Let's get all my glitter off of here so I'm not contaminating anything. up the red a little bit and see what happens here because sometimes with chunkies they don't have or mixes even though that they have fine glitters in them they don't fully fully cover and this is why you usually would want to paint your cup a color close to your glitter color so that if you do have peeking through spots yeah, this is going to work, I think. You can, um, you don't have to worry about them so much because they match your cup. But with this color shift, there's, all depends on your light here. They've got purples and greens and golds and reds, and it's just stunning. 
So this, this Santa's hat is actually blending quite nicely into here. It's not going to color shift. I'm sure Robin has an extra fine that matches this with her new stuff, but I did happen to grab, I just grabbed chunkies. So this is just an ideal fall color. We're doing a peekaboo with this one, just so you know what I'm doing here. I'm just sprinkling it everywhere I see white coming through. So just in just a light dusting. I don't want to do a major dump. I just want to make sure that my white is covered. And so if you hold your glitter kind of higher and just lightly tap on it so that it falls out little bits at a time, you're not going to waste so much glitter and overwhelm what's already going on there because I'm just trying to fill in just any of the little blank spots that I see the white coming through. Because I don't want, I don't want it. And make sure you get the bottoms, especially on the edges. The edges have a harder time. This is stunning. This is all oh, gonna look so pretty when it's all done. I can always go back after the fact and add another layer of epoxy and throw things in, but I prefer to do this all on the first layer. I'm not putting that away just yet. Knock off any excess. double check. Well, I am all about instant gratification. To me, it's also important to try and get things right the first step. I'm loving this glitter. Santa hat blends perfectly with it. Is this not the ultimate in fall? colors. And it's just so stunning and has all of the beautiful, makes me think of the Maritimes. I think I'm going to dump bucket that because I do have some of my chunky in there. So I'm just going to grab another piece of parchment. And set this aside because I need to start. I have my dump bucket is mostly pinks and purples and such, so um, I'm going to start a fall dump bucket so that I don't contaminate everything. Goes okay. So here's my, and many of you have seen this before. Whenever you do chunky, you can see it's all raised up and lumpy and bumpy and I mean it looks gorgeous 
but when you go to epoxy over this, you're going to need at least three coats with a really good sanding in between because it's so dimensional and textured and um, raised up. So the way to combat that is to lay your cup down on a piece of parchment paper. Wax paper also works. And you're going to, I can't wrap it all the way because of the handle. So I'm just going to press my hands over the parchment, applying a little bit of pressure and work my way around the cup doing this and see how flat it lays. It's going to reduce the number of coats of epoxy you're going to need. And I'm just going to press around. I'm not moving it because I don't want to scrape off the glitter. But I am pressing it. And get in between there. And underneath, and I still have my my red glitter out so I can fill up any spaces that are created if when it lays flat it's not covering anymore. And there are a few spots, and then you can just go over it with your fingers to catch any spots that didn't lay down. And you just tap them down. Okay, let me bring back this. And any spots that became exposed, just fill them in with the extra fine. You could actually have done the chunky lay it down first and then filled in with the extra fine. That probably works better. It means you don't have to go over it twice. But, you know, hindsight, right? Because you don't have to press down the extra fine, so this... That would work better, to, to just do... Roll it with the chunky only, and then apply an extra fine to fill in any of the gaps. Like you're not going to get it totally, totally with zero spikes sticking up, but you're going to get most of them down. And just get it as smooth as possible, especially along the edge, because you don't want, when you put this much effort into making something, you really don't want to um, have a finished product where you have rough edges because it's not attractive. So there we have our chunky glitter layer. I'm going to let this dry. Um, if I used uh, fast set epoxy. I, I could get away with only a couple hours, but um, I don't because I work full time, so usually it's not something that's conducive to me. But um, so I'm going to let this sit for probably six hours before I apply a layer of epoxy over it, and so I'm going to apply two layers of epoxy over top of this and um, then we'll move on to the next steps. 
and go from there. I'm just making sure all of my white spots are covered. So there we have this stunning gorgeousness, which is going to be a peekaboo. So um, I'll come back after I've epoxied this twice. So for this fall leaf cup, I just want to show you how I am planning on doing my um, leaves because this is a peekaboo. But what my final, I'm going to have um, the peekaboo glitter, but I'm also going to have the leaves outlined in gold. Um, textured vinyl is my plan. So I'm going to go, I'm in Cricut Design Space because that's um, the machine I have. I do most of my design work in Silhouette, but now that they have the offset feature in Cricut Design Space, it works pretty good. So I'm going to upload, I have all these different leaf images, so I'm going to upload um, this leaf image that I have. Wanted, I'm just going to show you one of them um, so that you can see what I'm doing here um, because this can get highly re repetitive. So this is the leaf that I want right now and um, I'm going to hit simple and continue and you can see on this particular leaf this uh, the veining is filled in um, which is great like we have we have to do it two times we have to do it once with the veining filled in so we get the solid outline shape and then we have to do it with the veining um, removed so that we can um, get that part gold so I've just clicked on a spot in here and you can see hopefully on the screen I don't know if you can um, but you can see that that's disappeared so this is now um, transparent this part because these are PNG images so I'm going to click on continue and you can see that this is not a solid shape and so this is a cut image. I'm, I don't know why they switched these because it used to be the print was on this side and the cut was on this side and they switched them which is really confusing. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to upload it and then I'm going to select it and select the fully solid counterpart that I've already done. I'm going to hit the control button so I can select them both at the same time and insert my images so it'll bring them both in. So this is going to be the one that I cut for, I'm going to resize everything later and I'll, I'll um, try to let you know what sizes I gonna, I'm going to go with. I just need to make some measurements first. Um, but this is the one that's going to be used for the peekaboo vinyl. This is the one that's going to be used for the gold. And right now they're the same exact size. So I'm going to come up here to, I hope you can see this. Um, up here to this offset button right beside the edit and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change my size to 0 0.05 and apply takes a minute for it to, to fully form in and then I'm going to just change it to gold so I can see what I'm doing here and um, it's now behind this. So I've changed my outline to gold and so right now this is just an offset over top of my shape that has this filled in. So I'm going to just uh, cover both of them, I select both of them and I'm going to come down to the bottom right over here and hit the slice button and wait for it to blink and now it's sliced so we can start pulling apart the layers so this is the original layer from the beginning we can get rid of that we don't need it anymore and when we slide this off so we have the gold filled totally and then we have the gold outline the outline is what we want to keep so we can get rid of that and we now have an outline for this that I will cut out 
in gold foil um, to put over top of after I pull it off so it's the glitter will be all of the black spots will be the glitter on the cup and then all of the gold will be the gold textured vinyl and you can highlight them both and align center um, to center them on your screen but on your screen it is really not necessary but it, it allows you to um, make sure that everything is the right size and if you want to resize them because I mean two inches I'm doing a coffee cup so two two and a half inch size leaves are going to be way too big so I'm gonna take these down to an inch and so long as you have them both selected they will downsize the same and I'm going to resize. So I'm going to do this with a variety of leaves. It doesn't matter that I have these all together on my screen so I can see what they're going to look like because when I click make it to um, cut them, I'll just show you, it sorts into the two different colors so you don't have to worry about um, sorting them. I'm just going to cancel that. Um, like you don't have to worry about making sure that they're in separate places. You can put them together on your screen and they will cut separately. So I just wanted to show you that quickly um, so that you can see what I'm what I'm doing here. And um, so once I get all of my leaves and the outlines set on them, I will um, cut these all out and um, I'm going to epoxy my cup twice and then I'm going to add these leaves in various places around the cup and um, and go from there as far as my peekaboo goes so I will come back okay I have this um, cup it's got the autumn joy uh, glitter chunky on it and it's infilled with a little Santa's hat. I will tell you that um, this is the first time I've done it. Putting chunky glitter on the handle of a cup is a real pain um, because you have to sand it and it's a hard thing to cover. So um, I'm going to I want to keep the handle glitter, and because this is a peekaboo, I wasn't even thinking of that while I was doing it. I could have just left it and um, spray painted it, but I want to keep the handle glitter because I spent so much effort on it, I don't want to lose that. And it'll tie in with the glittered um, exposed parts. But is this glitter not absolutely stunningly amazing? I love it and my mom is into reds and greens so I've decided that I'm going to make this for her. So in order for me to do, the first thing I need to do is um, cover this handle because I want it to stay glitter so I'm going to use electrical tape for that part and um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I want to make sure that uh, no paint gets on it, so I need to cover it well. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it this way. I've cut it and now I'm going to start on my inside edge here and just start wrapping it around. always put another piece. I just want to make sure it's well sealed so that when I do spray paint over this it's not going to 
bleed through and get on the handle. If it does, that's not actually that big a problem because I can just take some acetone and wipe it off. But this is this is going to work just fine. It's probably more than I needed at this point in time, but that's okay. Helps if you can hold things in your hands. And as always, you want to leave. Fold, well, as always, I want to leave a folded over edge so it's easier to find it and pull it up. So I'm just going to do a little tabby thing here so that when I go to pull it off, I can do that easily. So now my handle is all nice and covered. So when I do spray paint it, it's not going to get painted over. And I've wasted that half an hour I spent sanding. All right, so I've got my vinyl cut out. This is just uh, removable vinyl. Um, I bought a kit of various colors because it had a color in it that I wanted. This yellow is not something I'm likely going to use anytime soon for anything, so it's perfect for doing things like this because it's, in my head, a waste vinyl. Um, you can use stencil vinyl, you can use um, um, shelf liner, sticky stuff, you, what, whatever it is you have handy that you're not, it's not good vinyl and you don't want to use permanent necessarily. You can use permanent vinyl for, um, for a peekaboo, however, when you pull it up, it's a little harder to pull up and it can leave a sticky residue behind on your cup. So you don't want that. Um, so that's why I use a removable vinyl. It's not going to leave that sticky residue and it's going to be a lot easier to pull up and get rid of. Um, so anyway, here are all of our leaves, just the shapes. And I also cut out of textured vinyl, all of the veining and outlines, as well as a few smaller versions of the leaf in gold so that I can scatter them throughout my finished product. But um, this is just a, just the Cricut gold textured vinyl. Um, Robin has a fabulous gold textured vinyl I would go to her and get that as opposed to to getting this I just happen to have this one on hand that I need to use before I can I can get that but it's textured which is just kind of perfect for these kinds of leaves so and because I've decided to make this for my mom and my mom's not a really big um, have something with my name on it kind of thing. So I just used her first initial and did a monogram in the textured vinyl for this. So this is a bit of a pain to weed with all these fine little lines, but um, I think it came out pretty. So I'll, I'll just use this for that. So this, I need to know where I'm putting this um, because I need to make sure I don't put any leaves underneath of it. And so for right now, I'm going to take this um, dry erase marker. And usually you would put, if you're right-handed, you'd hold the, the mug in your right hand and this side is where you would put the main feature of your cup. When I make them for myself, I do it on this side because I want to see them. I don't want everybody else to see them, but this, 
So if you're left-handed, it would then be on the opposite side. And I don't need this right now, but I will. So there's no point in taking it off. So I'm not putting this on until the very end, but I want to know where it's going. So I'm going to put it, say, about here. I'm going to take my dry erase marker and I'm just going to draw lines sort of around the outline of this. So this zone where I have my lines, you can't hardly see these ones on this because of the color, but where I have these lines is where I am not going to put a leaf. And then once I have all of my leaves on that I'm going to uh, use for my peekaboo, I will remove these lines. And you'll, you'll see if I do this, I can just wipe it straight away on epoxy dry, dry erase markers are so good for marking things over epoxy. So I just want to make sure that's where I want it to be. It's kind of centered to the cup. So that's where I want that to be. So I'm going to leave that area alone to make sure I have a good area to put that on the finished product. So now I'm going to just start, you don't really need transfer tape for this kind of a dealio. You can just bend it back and peel it off and stick it wherever you want. I want it to be and I'm not likely going to be using all of these leaves on this cup. I just, it's better to cut more than you need than less. And I'm just going to go around the cup. You do want to put it on smoothly because paint will get up in there if you don't. And you just kind of randomly want to place things. I know random can be hard. <laughs> At least for me, random can be hard. Because I'm a bookkeeper. I don't, in my real life, I don't do random. My glitter kind of needs to be the star of this show. That's why I'm putting quite a few of these leaves on. I'm not going to do under the handle. I'll just leave that. But Can do the bottoms if you want, but I put um, my logo and instructions, Tumblr care instructions on the bottoms of every cup, so I don't usually decorate my bottoms. I do do a color that coordinates well. Okay.
And so just take a look around because everything that you've got covered up is where it's going to be glitter. So just take a look around, do another check to see that you have it as covered as you would like it to be. That dog just made an appearance. stick well I'll just kind of go kind kind of underneath here and I wanted to get that guy in there okay so I've got several leaves around here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray paint this now over top of these oh first I'm gonna take these lines off of here they just wipe off with your fingers like it's just so super easy and you can use whatever color you want to to do that and just gonna wipe them off and um, so now I'm going to spray paint this and I'm gonna spray paint it the same heritage white spray paint um, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it because I don't want it to be bright bright white I don't know if I'm gonna leave it that way or if I'm going to do something with alcohol inks on it yet I haven't decided so I will um, go and spray paint this. I take you with me but I don't have a good place to do that so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I will just go and spray paint this the Heritage White and um, come back for the next steps. Okay I think I figured out what I'm going to do with um, the base of this cup. So this is the Heritage White um, or heirloom white on the French side it says one thing on the English side it says another it means the same essential thing so um, one thing I did forget to mention is you need to make sure that you have sanded your epoxy very smooth before you put your spray paint on um, because it will show every bump that uh, that you have if you've missed any spots so you just need to be careful about that so what I'm going to do this is just the white and it would probably look pretty stunning um, just doing that but I am going to kind of do a wash with alcohol ink I've got here turquoise and caramel from Tim Holtz and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them both with a bunch of alcohol on this foamy pad and I'm just going to brush it down on the um, on the cup so that it just gives a nice light wash of those colors instead of being you know a bright and vibrant thing so I think I'll put my alcohol into my sponge first because I don't want it to be um, a heavy dark thing. I just want a light wash with these two different colors. I'm going to put a drop of each color on top of the alcohol and I'm just going to take it and brush it downward. So I'm just getting this light wash with these colors in it. I'm not sure I like these colors because they're a little together they're going a little bit greener than I want but that's okay because there's the green shift in the glitter that'll go nicely with this but I just want it nice and light nothing too crazy or dark. And I'm just doing one simple stroke from top or from bottom to top so that I'm not doing getting choppy lines in the middle of it. And if it starts to feel like it's pulling, then you want to um, add more alcohol.
So that's kind of a neat effect on here. And again, I'm going to add more alcohol. I'm going to add a little bit of the caramel, just a drop, and just a drop of the turquoise. And I want it to be even all the way around, so I'm going to keep working on this until I get it all nice and even. And I try to always remember to put gloves on before I start working with alcohol ink because I spend too much money on manicures to um, be walking around with stains of alcohol ink all over my fingers. And if you need to, with this kind of a washed effect, if you need to, you can just um, grab a new uh, pad with just alcohol on it so you can use it to blend. I suppose I could have just grabbed one of my greens because that would have had the same kind of effect here, but now I'm starting to take color away instead of adding color, so I need to add more color to my pad. A little bit more clear. to do this like this on the bottom. And just get it all smoothed out. And it's working with alcohol inks is actually pretty 
simple. If you don't like it, just keep adding alcohol and it'll smooth out eventually. biggest pain with this whole project from start to finish has been the handle but I really wanted to do a handled cut Alright, so this is, I could have just used one of my greens, I have greens, um, this is not exactly what I had in mind when I was doing this, but it works. So I'm just going to, when I work with alcohol inks, put the little lids on these, um, I, I like to, this is a fondant rolling mat, it's, um, doesn't absorb, so like putting paper down will absorb the liquid and it's not paper like parchment so it I can just use alcohol and wipe it up and put it back it's, it's so easy so now I'm going to grab my pin pen and if you've not seen this before this is just a mechanical pencil and I have can't, I can't get it all the way out this way, but I have inserted just a sewing needle into it, and it's just exactly the right size, and um, it is perfect. It's a perfect pin pen. You can spend a lot of money on a pen pen, or you can grab a mechanical pencil you've already got hanging around and um, and just insert a sewing needle into it, and you're good. So I'm going to now take off my um, decals that I put on. This alcohol ink dries super quick, so it's ready to go. So I'm just going to grab my pin pen and get underneath my vinyl so I can start lifting it up and peeling it off. I love peeling peekaboos. It's like Christmas seeing the underneath. So that's this stunning glitter against this greenish background. It looks pretty good, I think. My mom is going to love this. You can use a hook for this. I like to use a pin pen for this job because it's a little easier to make sure that you stay within the vinyl. Because if you start scratching outside of the vinyl, you're going to scratch the paint you just put on. And that's not what you want. So um, by using a pin pen, I can stay inside of the vinyl and lift up. And if I scratch this part, that's not a big deal because the um, the epoxy is going to fill it in when we do that. So I'm just going to keep going and um, try and speed this up for you.
Okay, we have this all epoxied now and the glitter is all super shiny and it's gorgeous. I love, love, love this color. And I have placed on um, my sticker on the bottom. This one is, is rose gold and anybody who makes tumblers, I sell these um, and they're, they're uh, foil laminated. And they can have whatever your logo is and um, and the care instructions on the cup some people debate about this I think that this is besides letting somebody know where they can order one if they've gotten one as a gift or to remember where they ordered it from because I know I order things and don't remember where I order them from um, so that's a reminder of that but it's also a reminder to anybody who maybe didn't read the instructions for care that I include, um, putting it in the dishwasher will catch your eye and hopefully you won't then put it in the dishwasher. So I'm about to apply decals. I, I didn't want you to watch me fight to get this to stick onto the, the paper, but this is um, my mom's uh, first initial. So I'm putting this on this blank space that I left on my tumbler and I'm going to do my best to center it and get it straight um, as I can. So I'm just going to pop that on there and then I'm going to run my finger over the middle and then I'm going to pull it to one side and just do that side and then I'm going to pull it to the other side and I'm applying a fair bit of pressure just to make sure that I get a good stick and then I can peel up my transfer tape So there's it with the monogram. So for these leaves, I have these gold cutouts of the outline and the stems, and then I have these little gold ones which I'll, I'll use to fill in um, various spaces if I feel I need to. So I have, I need to get rid of this now. This cradle is a really great thing for some things, but I don't use it very often for anything. So I've just got this tiny little piece of transfer tape because I don't need a great big thing for this. And I'm just going to, okay, well, I've got this leaf here, so I'll actually grab this leaf here first because it'll just be easier. This is where having better transfer tape is sometimes a good thing. Because the metallics, I don't know, they don't like to stick to this cheap stuff. So you have to really work to get it to stay on the sticky part. I mean, once it's on there, you don't have to stick it very good, but it just needs to stick to do the transfer. And you want it to hold its same shape. You don't want to mess around with that. Okay, so I've got this stuck to my hand now. Okay, 
and now I don't have it on the transfer tape at all. This is not a good thing. Okay. I feel like I'm such a hot mess sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to lay this down and I'm going to get this in the same shape. as the leaf itself. And I got this a little bit touched down before I wanted it to. And it's not going to move, so that's where it's going to stay. But that's how it looks. I just love that glitter. I could look at it all day. So I'm just going to carry on being a hot mess here. Um, my transfer tape again. I will attempt it until I either give up and just grab a paint tweezers or figure it out. That's better. Okay, this is a little maple leaf one. So you, you really want to make sure you get it lined up before it touches because once it touches you're not getting it back off in a good way. There, that worked out a lot better. So you can just see that gold just really, really sets it off. So much nicer than just leaving it open. So I am just going to keep on keeping on with this little project. I don't think that you need to watch me do it. So um, I'll just keep on doing that and I will come back. Okay, um, you're really happy that I didn't make you sit and watch all of that, but they're not perfect. But the leaves just look so much better with the veins and the outline in gold. It's, it's subtle, but it just sets them off so beautifully. And I'm happy I did it. So now I'm going to um, just peel off some of these little ones and scatter them. in the spaces where I think I might need one. So I just have just, just a small hit of gold in various places. I live in Canada, so there needs to be maple leaves. Doesn't need a lot, just just a couple here and there to um, add to the whole effect. And if you're being random about things, it's good to throw some in upside down too. So this 
is a pretty awesome fall tumbler and um, so I'm going to put probably with these outlines on here I'm probably going to need two coats of epoxy over top of this and um, then we'll call it done. I can even I'm going to throw a couple of leaves on the bottom just for fun just because it's a really big bottom. So there we have this beautiful fall cup that was a pain in my butt to do um, some parts of it like it took me half an hour to sand this handle <laughs> after three coats of epoxy so um, but I, I, I love this it, it is such a pretty effect so even though I didn't get my outlines on completely perfectly, when you're looking from not close up, you're not really going to notice that so much. But I think my mom's going to love it because she loves reds and greens and you can see reds and greens in this glitter. So again, this is Autumn Joy glitter and um, I filled in with a little bit of Santa's hat. So by the time this video posts, um, it should be, they, they should both be, I know Santa's hat's already there, Autumn Joy should be there by the time that this video posts because it's um, still a couple of weeks away. So um, anyway, get one of these beautiful mugs and um, go crazy doing a fall theme and um, I don't usually do seasonal themed cups for myself but this one I might carry but it's got my mom's initial on it so I can't so um, and again if you're interested in these labels for the tumblers that you make just send me a PM through my Facebook and I would be happy to hook you up. So take care.